Well, a very good morning and uh, nice to have you with us in this segment of the topical discussion. My name is Simon Kagwanjala and my guest this morning is the embattled former leader of opposition, currently parliamentary commissioner, uh, who is going through a storm that's ripping through the national inter platform, pitting him against uh, the principal, uh, Honorable Robert Chagulani. But what's at the center of all this? Could it be more than what meets the eye? And uh, what is next for him as he goes through these troubles? A very good morning, Honorable Mpuga. Good nice to have you. Good morning, Simon and viewers. Well, how are you weathering the dire straits? Well, I think I, um, some humans are made for particular situations. I simply could be one of them. But um, especially when you understand when you are what you're dealing with, and then it's easier to deal with it. It's more difficult when you're facing something uh, invisible, potentially unknown. Uh, but if you get to understand what's around you, what you're dealing with, um, the intention, the motivation, then uh, you are able to carry on. So I am able to rise every day um, and carry on, uh, be able to do what people expect me to do. There's a sense that you're swimming alone and uh, your colleagues have forsaken you. Who are the colleagues? The party where you belong. Well, I don't know whether you know what the party is about. The biggest mistake you can make is to uh, is imagine that the party is about its leaders. The party, a party is a very big thing. It's a very big entity. And um, because you're not going to press a microphone in front of everyone, and it's not necessary that everybody speaks unless necessary, so you probably do not have the right information. Yeah, but have you been able to sample, you being a journalist, have you been able to sample the rank and file of my party to make that conclusion? Or you're motivated by uh, what you confront on your phone every day, engineered um, and aligned to serve you that? Yeah, but there is a sense when you look at uh, the storm, for instance, mm -hmm. online. Mm. I, I think it speaks to the general picture in which you're being held now by the party and the kind of booing that you've had in recent days. By who? Members of the party, well, sympathizers uh, in this case. Uh, Simon, I think uh, we, we are reading from different pages. The difference between me and you and those who erroneously think like you is that uh, I touch and feel the rank and file of the party every day. Uh, when you scan through what you have called as social media, I don't know what percentage of the party it represents. Uh, but from my own knowledge, which is practical, it's not even 5% of the party that you are talking about. It Secondly, it mm. you've got to understand um, when people organize um, goons to boo you and the organic response from others, um, of course, that's how low we have sunk, that we can expend so much time and energy and resources uh, to try and portray our own as terrible, but not even an ounce of the same energy expended on the real enemies of the people on the group, on the cabal that has misruled us for all this long. But we are comfortable going for soft spots so that we can appear to be occupied. Being a lot in action, mm. but actually not in emotion. So I think it's, it's a form of uh, um, satisfying diversion to some people to appear to be working. Maybe it makes them happy. Who might stop people from being happy? Do you imagine the party now looks at you as a villain? Do you want to define to the viewers 
what a party is. The National Unity Platform. What is the party? The what party where what? you claim to be what, a founder. What is, what is a party? I don't claim. Do I claim? Well, there is the, you, you've come out invariably to say, I am a founder of the party, which has been disputed. By who? Uh, the leadership, the top leadership of the party says you joined the who, party. Who in particular? Assuming I joined, do my rights become NLS? So do the founders have superior rights over those who join subsequently, in your view? And did you find their argument logical? Does that justify the treatment of a member, founder, or uh, John come lately? Does that justify the, uh, the treatment? Okay, you were suspended from the office of deputy president. Was this indefinite? Uh, and how are you taking it in? Uh, well, Simon, I never gave it a lot of attention because um, uh, it does not, it's not founded on any uh, legal basis in our constitution. Uh, but I, I thought it, it was not necessary for me to escalate um, a battle that's not premised on principle or law, but spite. Because whoever did it knows that actually it's not clothed in the party constitution. It was motivated by um, probably personal gratification and um, the need to show off power, uh, which is very dangerous. But I never came out to speak out about it because it's inconsequential. Do you still carry the title of deputy president of the party? Do I have to carry paracards to, to carry it? Are you the deputy president? The person who appointed you is the person who relieved you. Yeah, you see, appointments are clothed in law. If you appoint me, it's not a, a matter of magnanimity. It's because your powers are clothed in the constitution, so you exercise them. Where you do not have those powers to suspend, you cannot exercise them. And the beauty is that uh, I know the party constitution. Uh, I know the powers of the president. The president has some powers to do certain things. Suspending a deputy president, at least not one of them. That's why I never, never reverted in a manner that would portray or disrespect my president. I simply said, well, maybe yeah, but he wants to be happy. When you say that you never responded in a way that offends him, mm. by saying Chagulani is under siege in your reply to the letter, do you think that was in good faith? Could you elaborate on this thing? Not for Simon. The person I wrote to probably gets understands better the context. Because uh, NUP being a young party, there are lots of forces tagging back and forth. And uh, I get the sense that uh, my president is caught up in these uh, kind of forces. Uh, compressional and attentional. And uh, probably he has not given it time to understand these forces how and where they are pulling from. He knows the forces, but I think he's not given any time um, to fully appreciate and figure out the w best with, way. Without sounding ambiguous, who are these forces? Who are you referring to that's holding the party under siege? Uh, like I said, it's not for Simon's consumption, uh, but I, I think I thought I should bring it to his attention just in case he has forgotten that um, you've got to take care of your surroundings because a party is a national assets, a public good, and therefore you cannot use it uh, to dispense, um, um, you cannot use it to, 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 to satisfy your, your ego, to serve your, uh, those around you. It's a big issue, and therefore whatever action you take, you, you must put into consideration the fact that um, the stakeholders are various, and therefore you don't simply uh, take a decision because you're angry and your anger has no premise, but despite. Do you look at NUP as a party anchored on taking power? Y as far as I know, yes. The question would be, are the actions uh, uh, we undertake currently or recently um, driving us in that kind of direction, that we're actually serious about power, or we have um, 
reach a stage where we feel a sense of satisfaction in so far what we have achieved. You know, there's a whole man of danger when you, in the short term, you make some, sometimes I am tempted to get the feel that uh, probably some of us at the top echelons of the party feel that uh, they have overachieved and therefore uh, even if it ends there, the written history. To some of us, uh, it's not yet Uhuru. There's so much to do. First of all, the party itself hasn't formed and guild as an organization. We have never left our formation stages to take the party to the second stage of performance. We are still in information and conflict, and therefore we've not been able to find time, adequate time, ample time, good time, for deeper thinking into where the party ought to go into in the interim. Yeah, but it, it rests on you as a leader of the party. You've not anchored or you've not chosen to take the direction of growing the party from, from the formative stage. You know, Simon depends on what you know and what I know. I don't know how much you know. But I will tell you uh, that without regret, over the last three years, I have uh, invested my time into trying to interest colleagues into making this party a national party, into taking this party to the people, not simply sloganeering about the existence of the party. Build formidable, dependable structures. Build a culture, a party culture. Build leadership. Mobilize, train, and deploy leaders. This we haven't done. We're simply still in 2021 election mode. And for me, that poses the biggest danger to the party. Because for you to be able to build uh, um, an enduring organization, you must lean back and do particular things the way they're supposed to be done in building an organization. Unfortunately, over the last three years, we haven't found time to do that. And I think that partly explains how we have handled this, what you have called a crisis. Because if we had enduring, formidable party structures, systems, and party culture, probably this could have been handled a little better. Is Which this is a why conversation you've held with the party president at any given moment? Not just the president alone, but with uh, the top uh, leadership of the party. And I, what I, was I the have been consistent mm. in insisting that the party needs to be structured. We have not had occasion to, to produce a new party constitution. We're still working with an old constitution, which is very problematic. I thought it was posted to the Electoral Commission for gazetting the new amended constitution. Yeah, when, when, when you, you gazette, you must return the constitution to, to, to the national, uh, to the Degas conference and they create a valid constitution of the party. That has not been done. The constitution seal is sealed with the EC and uh, the gazetting got into issues. So you, that's not a new constitution. We still use the old constitution. So the constitution alone, mm. but there are things we would have done practically with or without a new constitution. There are issues, there are actions we would have taken over the last three years to try and make the party more formidable, more visible, anchored on to the wishes of the people, have, have it uh, in the hands of the people. The party is still at the headquarters and uh, in a few towns. And when you go there, Leadership is still interim, and that's very problematic. And before you know it, um, the ruling party has had a take. It's recruiting. It is organizing. They have had power for 40 years. We don't have power. We cannot go back to, the, to an election in the same shape we were three years ago. And uh, I hasten to add that, unfortunately, we seem to be focused on the next election, but not organizing for the next election. That is very problematic. Well, I've read quite a number of correspondences that you've made ever since this crisis started. There seems to be a deep sense of regret and frustration that things are not working your way. 
is it time for Buga to quit the National Unity Platform? Simon, things are not supposed to work my way. Things are supposed to work the party way. The party must be allowed to operate as a party, not as a small kiosk. Who is suffocating you that it, can, it cannot operate? I will not, I will not personalize um, the challenges in NUP because it's not necessary. All I'm saying is that um, whoever has the duty to have no function as a party hasn't done the job they're supposed to do. You recollect, Including yourself. At least I'm on record insisting that things be done right. And um, I cannot regret that. Okay. Because it's not that I don't know what's supposed to be done. Putting down the necks of colleagues that we get things done right. Such that the party has a structure. You see, a party is like a shoe. Once the size is agreed upon, you fit in. If it doesn't fit you, you don't remove the sole or the laces. You must be able to fit within the party as built. But we haven't, we are yet to come up with, uh, you know, an enduring party structure, a party culture in which all of us must fit. Apparently, in our current situation, everyone is carrying a piece of what they are able to carry, and that is a pattern in pieces. Hmm? I'm saying that apparently the way things are, because we haven't yet built a culture, Everyone is carrying away a piece over the party, and the party is not together. That, for me, portends danger for the leaders of this party and for the ambitions and the goals for which this party was founded. For me, I is contended that um, uh, we are running out of time, and the earlier all of us realize that um, there is all manner of danger in not aligning the party to the aspirations of the people and get it away from the small ambitions and whims of individuals short term in nature, we shall have ourselves to blame as leaders and as stakeholders in the party. You've widely talked about cliqueism, family cliqueism, spite, disrespect, and backstabbing within the party. Yeah. How deep are these issues that you raise? Deep or and not And where deep. do they start from? Deep or not deep, we don't need them. In fact, by talking about them in earnest, they should be nipped in the bud. And the best way of nipping them is by building a political culture, a party system, a party culture that does not facilitate, that does not intubate clickism, you know, spite, and the nature. You talked about goons being organized to come and help me at, uh, at a public function. That was official, funded. And you see the beauty is that because I'm within and deep into the party, I get to know who do does what. Do you have what. evidence to this? That what what, what kind of, that do, you want it, do you want it hired to heckle you? Do you, want it, do you want it documentary? Do you want it, um, in which form do you want the evidence? No, it sounds unfounded. Did you me. see that were, being... Were, were these organized goons? Did you see that being done by everyone or a small group? You were journalists and you followed. Was it everywhere or in a small circle? Was that by accident? So these are the kind of things that some of mm. us, some of our leaders, expend time and resources on. It's not necessary. Unfortunately, time is the biggest enemy of politics. And while you are doing that, the clock is ticking away. The, 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 there's every impression that the changes that you're seeking within NUP will not take shape. Why don't you quit? Well, it's not anybody's job to advise him to quit. I think I'm clothed with uh, enough wisdom to know what to do in politics. Did anybody invite me to join? It was a personal decision. And the quitting can never be a solution to problems. No, you were trying to find a home, having had uh, quite a number of troubles within the Democratic Party. So when a snake enters your house, you demolish it and build a new one? You simply must go for the snake and have it out. Have you, you gone for the snake? Are you going for the snake now? I am emboldening, emboldening stakeholders to speak out. You, you see a lot of uh, quietness that you, which you talked about, you, you referred to as abandonment. People are called to speak. So you, 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 you cannot run an organization where people can't speak. 
only a few can speak and with authority to speak. We are members of parliament are so timid to, to, to talk about how the parties manages. But can I simply tell you, Simon, that mm -hmm. we, the, the, the issues within the party that really make this all look terrible are not so many. But simply mismanagement, indiscipline, and lack of clarity. Yeah, but the party says they are doing this within the ambits of the values of the party. And the discipline is one of them. They are disciplining you for the bonanza. So you, you, so you, you discipline uh, somebody for wrongdoing. Mm. First of all, you declare them guilty. And then you tell them to come and enter plea. Simon, you are guilty, but in the meantime, come and make your case. So <laughs> what do you take of that? Did you say that, or I'm wrong? Probably you're right. Yeah, so how do you deal with that? Okay, by the time this matter exploded of uh, 500 million shillings, were there back and forth engagements? Not, to my, not to my knowledge. When have you spoken to your principal, for instance, to get this ironed out? I've not had occasion to, because um, I think he has had uh, a catalog of things to do with this matter. Uh, first of all, declare me guilty. Then secondly, ask me to come and make my case. Then thirdly, suspend me. So, so I deal with that. How much? That, that's why I talk about the fact that I think my, my, my friend and leader is under siege. Because who makes him make all those mistakes, one after another? How much betrayal do you harbor from uh, your friend, the person you call your friend, Honorable Robert Chagulani? Uh, unfortunately, I am um, devoid of uh, anger. I am only, uh, I only have a deep concern. Because the building of NUP mm. to where it is was um, um, out of a huge, immense, deep sacrifice by so many people. It involved a lot of uh, uh, deep thinking, sacrifice, and therefore this could easily go to note if leaders see themselves alone in the mirror and believe that whoever has a contrary view on how the party should be managed is an enemy. That for me is the concern. I don't have anger because we have so little time and so much to do to be angry with each yeah, other. Yeah, but naturally you'd imagine that the person you assume to be a friend would handle you in a, in a collegial it manner. It's a natural reaction uh, that uh, anybody would go out over there would try and tarnish my name and then feel a sense of uh, self-satisfaction. That you go out of your way to call a press conference, to go to funerals. To I have not seen that being done to enemies of this country. You've seen so much energy, so much resources invested in painting me the way uh, individuals in the NUP tried. I am not sure they have succeeded, but a lot has been <coughs> invested into that. To what consequence? Time will tell. I'm a believer in time, that's why I'm not angry, but I'm concerned. Because Simon, to be what I am, takes a bit of time. You don't wake up to become Matthias Mpuga. Assuming for academic purposes, Matthias Mpuga made a mistake. Let's argue for academic purposes. So then, how would you handle a nation if you found a country in a crisis in Kalamoja, a crisis in Kabale, one in Zombo? Would you bomb the country? So I think it puts into perspective a number of questions, um, uh, the readiness of some of us to offer leadership, even when faced with a crisis. Leadership is about facing challenges and finding solutions. You plunged the party into this crisis. How? By, for instance, coming out to say you're not willing to, to step down from the position of Commission of Parliament over the cash bonanza, the service award. I think, Simon, you are, you, are, you are dragging us into a matter that has been legally settled. If you think this is not lawful, 
I think it, people should have a right to challenge it. Uh, but because I know that there's nothing wrong with it, then I have no reason to back down over black America. Okay, you're legally right. Perhaps. How about morally? Do you think this Simon, stands morally? I am a member of the commission, the same commission that gave car grants to members of parliament. Did they resign? Because the public had issues with it. But was everyone a leader of the opposition in that parliament? I was the leader of the opposition in the parliament. And the same commission, its wisdom thought so. So how do you call me a thief? And you want, uh, you know, you go out of your way to invest party resources into convincing the world and everyone that Matthias Simpuga is a thief. That's paid and, you, and, you, and you are serious. And you want me to take you seriously. You know? I think it is spite. It's an act of spite. The moment I understood that, which is why my anger subsided and said, okay, there's a problem. We can deal with the problem. Well, going by the different correspondences and, of course, the current situation, there is every picture mm -hmm. of irreconcilable difference, differences between you mm -hmm. and the party leadership. In the first place, is it irreconcilable? And are you open to talks to resolve this outside the cameras? Irreconcilable is your word. As long as uh, individuals realize their mistakes, it's up to them to climb down their high horse and they say, we think this was uh, badly handled. But when that is done, what is um, um, my reaction subsequently uh, will be from my heart to make a choice of whether I am able to carry on okay, or not. But for anybody to remain on the high horse and make a claim out of space and common sense is something I cannot accept. Is it true that you've been contacted by institutions like the kingdom? Are you one of the institutions? I'm asking. If they had wanted Simon to know, they would have made a public announcement. But I've not been contacted for the record. Behind the scenes, are there talks to reconcile you with uh, Honorable Chagulay? Behind the scenes, I am not behind the scenes. We will speak to the people who are behind those scenes. I am not one of them. You spoke of doing stakeholder engagements, mm. speaking to members, speaking to colleagues to see, how, to see the next step. Mm. How are these engagements going? I am doing a lot <coughs> of uh, engagement with colleagues within and without NUP. And I'm doing a lot of listening because it's a huge and deep concern that at this stage in its infant life, NUP would be discussing this, but not how to lead the country to the next agenda. As the vanguard, as the vanguard opposition party, we expected to be doing different things at this stage. The preoccupation seems to be different, and therefore not preparation to lead the country and the people of Uganda into the next phase of the struggle for total liberation. So I'm doing a lot of listening. I speak to so many people, and uh, out of that, probably, because there's nothing like a, a personal decision about politics at this stage. You need to listen to people, and then out of uh, the aggregation of the ideas that you collect from people, then you're able to think through your options out of a consultative process. NUP is but part of a bigger scheme of things, the broader politics of the opposition where at least every party now is facing some bit of crisis. Mm -hmm. No wonder today we see Colonel Dr. Chizare CJ back on the political scene would you consider probably a new formation outside the traditional parties that seem to be now challenged? <laughs> you know, Simon, as, as long as the, um, the environment disables the um, performance of parties, formation of party or what, we always find a, a problem. What is very important is the commitment <coughs> of uh, the duty bearers in those platforms. Uh, 
Dr. KB, as we fondly uh, refer to him, has been consistent on so many things. And um, I wouldn't call it a return. He's at what he's been convinced about for all these years. And um, the only difference is that um, while he had taken a bit of uh, back step, he's um, probably now taken a step forward to say, hey, come on, guys. Um, there seems to be some form of slumber that has the potential of, uh, of giving the wrong impression as to the stakeholders. And when he comes back to say, can you rise and we do something different? He's been consistent about the fact that um, elections don't work. Uh, and um, he seems to be trying to dissuade the opposition from uh, going for the next election without meaningful reforms. Uh, my party president just announced that he will contest in the next election. That clearly shows that the two are at court purpose, despite the several interactions. That itself is a big challenge, that the opposition speaks in tongues, that the opposition has yet, for all this long, has not yet found reason to move and speak together, is a huge challenge. Secondly, if you do not want elections, and therefore, we need is that pronouncement consulted upon or is it personal? These are the issues. So can you take back the opposition in an election without demanding for meaningful constitutional and electoral reforms? Remember uh, in 2022, Simon, mm. I congregated the opposition to discuss the idea of constitutional and electoral reforms. You remember the reaction of my party to, the, to my proposals? Now, immediately without reforms. And they also were saying that we should not even think about contestation. So these are huge challenges and um, they're not insurmountable. The opposition must honestly an election where a one be abakama has had just had a reappointment without a new skin, without new ethos around the law and practice. So what do you expect? In the meantime, General Museveni seems to have said he has a heir apparent, a co-president. If you studied the recently made realignment, just as the commander in chief would meaning that for him, he has settled his own internal succession issues. All of us have been working to ensure that that does not take place, that General Museveni does not build a monarch in this country. Now that we are scattered satisfaction, we have a problem. Who derives satisfaction from bringing you down? Oh, well, uh, you are asking a necessary question. You have seen how much in investment has been made. Uh, all over, you know, and when people speak, you believe that the world has ended. That's why they will tell you the law is okay, but there's a problem with, uh, you know, we must give the country hope. There's no reason why the FDC, Katonga, FDC, Najana, Nkumbi, whatever is remaining of uh, my old party, DP, whatever is forming of NUP. If by your admission that some leaders in the party are spiteful towards you, has this just started yesterday with this bonanza? Well, um, uh, first of all, I decline to use your words. I, there was no such bonanza. If it was a bonanza, a bonanza would have had something done out, out, out of the law and the provisions within which we work. So there was no such thing as a bonanza. Uh, secondly, um, because an organization is built in a hierarchy, you can understand when at formation there are issues. Because this NUP is the collective of various actors from different social, political, civic backgrounds. It is understandable that at formation, 
people speak different languages and you try to move to the center mm -hmm. so that you speak the same language. But at the second stage of conflict, when people use that to try and undermine others deliberately, then you know that probably there are those in the party that either are scared of others or actually prefer to run the party as a small kiosk for them to thrive. That they fear the bigger emboldened party that they cannot survive. They prefer to swim in a, in a small, you know, probably sand pond, not a swimming pool, where ideas fly, and therefore the aggregation of the same must find you there and you must fit in. Where ideas portray you as you know, a problem because you have a different ideas, then you have a very huge problem in a party. So apparently, NUP is failing to exit the second stage of uh, organizational formation, which is conflict. And because we haven't evolved an internal conflict management mechanism. When I was LOP, I had to endure a lot of challenges within and without the party. To be able, because I had a duty to keep the opposition together in parliament, and also to grow and embolden my members from NUP that were new in that space, new to politics, new to parliament. And therefore, I had to have uh, my shock absorbers at their best to be able to carry through all these challenges of individuals, of organizational buildings, of uh, people who either are scared of me or do not understand me. You were reporting with me as NBS from the field, wherever I would go. The field activities I made, I was making to try and expose the regime or discomforting um, um, some members, some leaders in the NUP because the argument was that, you see, that man is marketing himself. He wants to compete for president as if that were a crime. But I was doing the law of the head of the opposition. I read of the opposition. So that office is a very serious office. That's why it must be occupied by serious people. Probably. You have to go out of your way to do things which ordinary members or leaders in the party do not do. And that's what I was doing. That in a way also caused problems. And um, I remember in one of uh, my several visits, um, members were being called, members of parliament were being called not to go with me to the field. I, I, I found that not just obje objectionable, uh, but quite, quite telling of uh, uh, the quote of some of the people we work with. But I think that was uh, um, a small bit, was able to overcome that, and I made it clear to all and sundry why the LOP must be able to go out of his way to do what I was doing, including Simon um, uh, meeting, because the LOP's office is a public office. In that office, when you're there, you receive all manner of persons, government ministers, permanent secretaries, all sorts of people come to you, religious leaders, and when they come to you, it's not because they are your friends, but because you are in occupation of a public office in which you must, uh, you must discharge a public duty, not to friends, but to the taxpayer. That's what I was doing. And um, I am advised it was a source of discomfort to so many in my party. Well, the same way you advised Honorable Sengeni to read the book, How to Have a Porcupine. Perhaps is the same way I would advise you to read the 48 Rules of Power. Or well, not rule number one? It's up to you to interpret it. Interpretation is very... We'll easy. take a break. Good morning. <laughs> Welcome back. Still having a conversation with the man in the eye of the storm, Honorable Mathias Mpuga, Member of Parliament for Nyendo Mukungwe. Well, ever since this crisis broke out, you've snubbed party events. Is this deliberate? Yes. You've made no show at the presentation of the alternative budget. Mm. You've made no show at party events. Mm. It is, it is deliberate. I'm not sick. Because sometimes you need to keep away from some people's space for your own peace and for their deeper imagination of issues. 
uh, I'm human, and therefore I cannot pretend about the fact that uh, I, I get a sense of discomfort um, uh, to be in the face uh, of individuals who spite me, despite the fact that uh, I have made a huge contribution to lift them to where they are. I, I feel a sense of uh, betrayal and um, as a human, I keep a wee bit. Um, my keeping away is not permanent, but to enable them to, to reflect on what they're doing. And probably, if it gives them happiness, uh, I want them to be happy. I don't want to, to disrupt their peace and happiness. Well, you referred in your letter to Lina Zibriga that you've had engagements with her on the direction that the party is taking. Mm -hmm. Do you, does she say, share your sentiment or you seem to be a different wavelength? Dr. Rina Zedriga is a very respected lady, hugely experienced in the public space. And uh, I have had engagements with her, just like other senior leaders, about um, the direction of the party. And uh, she seems to share same, same sentiments. Mm. So I was just trying to remind her that uh, this rest you forget. Um, we have discussed these issues and they remain pertinent. It was as humble as that. And um, in doing so, I wanted to summon uh, her memory to recollect the fact that uh, we are grappling with a big problem because a party is a big thing. For you to build a party um, with a view of taking power, you're going to deal with very complex issues beyond the disagreements of what is what and what is not. And therefore, you, you, when you have seniors like uh, Dr. Rina, then when in times like this, they should never be used as Trojan horses. They should be available to try and guide and even step on some toes using their seniority to say, hey, guys, that's not the way. That is the way to the tall grass. The better way is this way. And um, it was intended to summon her full presence and her memory. Do you long to be back to Kavuria in your office as deputy president when the suspension is lifted? It's not just a longing. Uh, my participation and involvement in NUP is voluntary. And therefore, I, um, my interest in building NUP is part of my conviction. I'm convinced that uh, I have a duty to do, and that duty is not personal, but institutional. And therefore, nobody can stop me from playing my role as long as I'm interested. But I must make it clear to all and sundry that's not proper to try and undermine uh, people's effort with the view of achieving short-term goals. Because at the end of the day, we are a chain and uh, we are different. I, I will not wake up tomorrow to be Chagulanyi. And Chagulanyi will not give, wake up tomorrow to be Matthias Mpuga. We are different and um, our roles are complementary. They're not competitive. The tendency to see, um, when politicians see each other as competitors, there's always a problem. And um, when competition becomes unhealthy, then those that have power have a tendency to abuse it. Has it now hit you that you were never meant to work together with Honorable Chagulani? I am never meant to work with anyone. I have a duty to work with everybody because that's the way humans work. There are no people born to work with you. That's why you don't marry your sister, or your, your, your relatives. You marry a stranger you have met. Politics is a marriage. Mm. And that, have hit the, that has hit the rocks. Well, uh, the convenience you're talking about, I'm not aware of. If you go to Kavle and build a party culture. You in were one, welcome in day. as a migrant to the National Unity Platform. So were there NUP before I joined? Was there NUP before I joined? 
Are you aware of the existence of NUP? There was Chibalamaz NUP. Was it NUP or NURP? NURP. So were there NUP? Which later morphed into National Unity Platform. But you know the facts. So don't mislead viewers. There was no NUP. NUP, and you remember there was a legal problem. It was a problem of the law because I was in the parliament um, and I was uh, on a DP ticket. So there was no way I would come out very early. I want to play your footage to where declare you were being welcomed into the party. That those are rituals. Play it. They are rituals. So are you saying that the Honorable Chiaguanyin does not have a party card? It's a big thing to be appear to be giving Matthias Mpuga a card publicly. Are you alive? Yes, I am. Yeah. So it's, it's huge. It's big. I am not Simon in Jalakagua from uh, <laughs> from reading a green and white card and bearing a new card. That ought to have been done. It was okay. And so many others. But again, do you appreciate that it was I, I, because you know, of the magnanimity of Honorable Bobby Wine that he appointed you deputy president? Did you say magnanimity? Yes. You see him as a king? Is that your view of In him? In this case, he's a principal. Part parties are built on. You work, you compromise, you work with others. But in leadership, it's one at a time. Did you, why, why was it me appointed, not anybody else at that time? No, he cherry picked did I, did I compete? Uh, alone, just alone. So did I compete with anybody? Was there a competition? It's because the situation of the party is such that he appoints. Yes, and disappoints. Okay. No, there there is a problematic there is, constitution. Yeah, there is. But Simon, the, 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 the question that must be clear is that uh, appointments of the nature are done because you mutually agree that... Suspended you. Well, that is for, your, for the comfort of your politics. Uh, but uh, did, did, did he say uh, that he found me any deserving? Why did they say... Start with the letter that he <coughs> wrote um, while discharging you from the office of deputy president. Uh, he said, you are it also goes against Article 5.3b of the party which obligates party members. In accordance with the Article 6.3 and 7.1 of the party constitution, I hereby suspend you from the position of Deputy President of the National Interplatform for Central Region with immediate effect and accordingly refer the matter to the National Executive Committee for further processing. This well, uh, gives a sense that it's legal. Simon, I, uh, you don't, you, I don't have space to discuss that because uh, all that you are reading, I know the genesis and um, I don't want to escalate it because like I said some time back, it, it's not clothed anywhere in the, the legal regime of the party. Secondly, how do you speak about the hierarchy of, 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 um, of somebody already declared guilty before an investigation, then suspended, then investigate? Uh, I think there's a problem, you can see. Uh, but uh, I don't want to go into that space because um, escalation of conflict for me is helpless doesn't help the cause for which I stand for. I, am, I prefer to go for higher goals. You look and sound emotionally drained by the current crisis. How far can you go? Well, I don't know your measure of emotional drain uh, that you're using. The fact that I'm able to come here and speak to the nation means that I'm available. But make no mistake, I am a human. Tr to sit through actions of spite, actions that are not anchored anywhere in any law, uh, then I'm like, probably my president is being surrounded by people not helpful. Probably my president is, um, uh, there's, there's somebody breathing down his neck uh, and therefore 
disabling him uh, from uh, being um, able to think deeply about every action and how the action cascade and their impact on the party. You see, for you to, to, to wake up and say Simon is a thief is a strong statement. You don't simply say it. And after saying it, then you say, please supply evidence. So what are you trying to do? So these, these are the kind of situations that make, us, make me lean back and say, okay, I think there's a big problem. The problem is not about the suspension. The problem has nothing to do with the request that you exit the commission. Uh, you saw the, 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 the tweet by the press secretary general mm. about my exiting the commission. That, oh, what he wanted to do is to make sure that the country is aware that this person works for NRM. Uh, you know, we have achieved it. So, what was he saying? That this was, he was informing the country that we have been choreographing something. It's not coming out well, but we have chosen this path. That was the meaning of the tweet, that uh, they have been working on something for some time. Uh, it hit a wall. Uh, he has found a shortcut. I think uh, it, 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 it now appears good. It's okay now. So when you hear that and see that, you, and you are sensible and reasonable, you lean back and say, well, I will go for the higher goals. I, I won't be drawn into this uh, micro-conflict. The party spokesperson once hinted that uh, you hide under the Buganda. Which spokesperson? Same as Joel. Mm. That you hide under Buganda, the ambush the, the, the that. I, um, my young brother, I think, need to say it has a lot of bearing, not just on NUP, but the country. And uh, I you seem to be helping him. Well, uh, help is sought if you need it. So I was saying that um, I have a history. If that history discomforts some people, I don't know how to help them. So I, I don't really have much to, to say to that. Do you endorse the missives from your colleague Onweba Bebwanika towards the party? So what? Well, he's talking about issues to do with the, how the party is being run. And he sounds to be the number one sympathizer of Onweba Matthias Mbuga. Well, I think um, Dr. Bwanika, first of all, is a senior political leader in this country. No doubt about that. And when he talks about a party being run uh, parallel to known norms, I think he knows what he's talking about. It's whether he's a supporter. I don't have supporters. No. There are people out there who are reasonable to think through the problems. He could be one of them. Probably one of the few with the courage to speak out. Because um, at parliament, so many members of parliament are are close to me, and uh, they would prefer to speak in whispers. Probably the Honorable Monica is one of the few that have someone the courage to say, hey, these issues must be spoken about. It's whether um, his approach adds value to what ought to be done is a matter for another day. But at least he's been able to speak out. Don't forget the fact that we come from the same community, we serve the same community of Masaka City. Probably he naturally has a soft spot for me because we have endured so much. But most importantly, he has a clear understanding of... Uh, yeah, but the things he's raising he sound rather unpalatable, connecting the party to homosexuality. The Honorable Abed Wanika is a fluent communicator. Why don't you host him tomorrow? and seek his views on this platform. I'm not his spokesperson, and um, he should be able to speak out, question the wisdom of the issues he raises, and why he raises them now, and whether they have um, um, any relationship with how the party is run. Wouldn't prudence dictate that you get these matters out of media spotlight? and have a silent engagement with the person you call your president. That you invited him here to speak. 
and I have spoken. Uh, but I'm not controversial. Um, I think where you need to speak, why I came, for example, here to speak to the country is because I need to clarify particular positions I hold on these issues. Yeah, but you're, and so how you're, you're sounding quite ambiguous on a number of things. The party is under siege. Who has besieged the party? You're not disclosing. No, who says I should disclose to Simon Kagwanjana? You came to speak. Yeah, yeah. If, you know, for the difference between me and you is that, um, and others, maybe not you, is that I know what to speak where. Okay? Actually, asking whoever is in charge to try to plug the, the holes. And they don't do it, and yeah, the siege continues. He who alleges must prove. Eventually, there will be capture. If the siege is not um, abated, there will be capture of the party. Uh, by forces hitherto unplanned for. Okay. The best way of uh, insulating the party from siege is building structures of the party that are anchored on uh, the, the party constitution <coughs> and um, the values of the party. You were referred to the National Executive Committee and there's been some, some bit of controversy regarding the National Executive Committee. Does it exist in the first place? Simon, um, the party has a neck, challenges refer to its functionality and how it is constituted. But that's for another day. So the issue of the constitution of neck is sticky within the party, right? Definitely. When you look broadly at uh, the opposition now as it stands, do you think it still has its eyes on the ball of removing President Museveni? or you're totally in disarray and thinking other things? The opposition, like I said earlier on, is various. It's a shared platform. But the actors are different, and their motivation seems to be different. Which is why, when you have the entirety of the opposition, committed opposition actors on a round table, you're able to have a voice. If the voice of reason is able to surmount the voice of, uh, you know, symptoms, simple, simple things, then we'll be able to have a common voice. The opposition does not refer to leadership per se. The opposition is the growing number of citizens that want to see Uganda move differently, and there are many out there. We are simply duty bearers, and we can change any day. But while we are in charge, we have a duty to sit together and agree on the trajectory of events we ought to do. Pronouncements made by each small group moving in a different direction does not help the cause of the entire opposition that once changed yesterday. So which is why immediately we need, to, away from uh, desiring pictures that you know we met, you see we are together, the actions do not speak to the pictures that we take very seriously. So we need to be speaking to things must be together. As we get out of here, there is a popular call on you to summon the courage to leave the party. Some people are saying, Ave mchi to Chabane, Akuli Vivie. Chabani. Chabobi. Well, then you're telling, you, you, it's as though you're saying, uh, Bobby is building a small local thing, uh, Azimba Kantuke. He's never implied it to me, the Azimba Kantuke. The impression I get from him is that commonly and together we are building an organization okay if so i ever discover that that's not the intention then i'll have to, to so reality decisions. hasn't hit you yet that uh, this is his vehicle it's his thing if it's your thing it will collapse on your back and uh, i am yet to hear fit from him that actually all the energy all the time He's expanding, he's building a small car thing for himself. And I'm helping him not to do that because it is fatal. Is the party... I don't know how they're built. If I saw one being set up and I construe it as one, I'll be one to lead the dismantling of that cult. Well, that brings us to the end. Uh, what a pleasure hosting you, Honorable Mathias Simpuga.